Hello, and welcome along to Storytime with Uncle Gravy. Big hellos to Isaac and Theo and Joseph and anybody listening or watching today, or doing both if you can multitask. So today is quite an important day, because today I'm sharing with you the last chapter in the first book in the series, A Rustle in the Grass. And as the last chapter's got a lot of things going on all at once, I thought I'd go back a tiny little bit so that we can get the whole chapter in one chunk. I was limited yesterday because YouTube only allows you to upload a certain amount of time. So I'd rather do that chapter in one piece rather than just do a little piece at the end. <laughs> so I think it's kind of better as a full chapter. So I'm going to go back a little bit, but then by the end of this clip, we will have reached the end of the book. I may even ask you some questions, but I hope you enjoy this one today because this is what we've been building to. We have Russells either side of a magic glowing hole, some of them wanting to explore, some of them wanting to get home, some of them wanting to find answers to where their friend has gone, and all of them maybe being watched by people that they're not even aware of. Holly and Jake were now grinning and almost as wide-eyed as Chris. They were looking directly at a hedgehog as it sniffed the air and then turned around to face the gap and squeaked out a call. Oh, I love it, whispered Jake, sounding like he was going to pop. This is amazing, squeaked Holly, and they both turned to reach for their pencils and watches so they could record the time that the experiment and the project had officially become a success. Bernie was nearby, but not close enough to see all of the action properly. However, a Russell's ears are very good at hearing at night, and Bernie was now truly wondering what was being heard. Ash, this is it. We are now brave explorers. Let's go through this hole. No more twists, no more corners. Bernie's head was suddenly full and dizzy. This was the voice from the dreams. But this wasn't a dream. This was the voice which sounded like Ash, but wasn't Ash. It was close, and it was getting closer, and it was talking. And talking to Ash? Tilda was the first hoglet to smell her mum nearby and to go through the hole. Ash hadn't had time to reply to Darcy, as Tilda sped up as soon as she heard her mother's call. Hattie followed next, and then Hazel wriggled through. Bernie was now moving as quickly as possible towards the hole. Whatever Chris had seen the previous night, and whatever story there was waiting, it surely had to have something to do with what was happening now. Bernie now knew that answers were arriving, and arriving fast. Chris was still hidden in the grasses on one side of the hole, shocked at the size of the hedgehog and stunned by the noises and voices that were raining down all of a sudden. Bernie reached the other side of the hole and looked across, picking out Chris's eyes in an instant. And they were now wide open, but were getting wider. Ash let go of the prickles and fell to the ground as soon as Tilda had crawled through the hole, because Ash was home. This was home. The smells, the plants, the earth and the shells were all still there and it was a sudden and beautiful shock. Seconds after Ash stood up, Darcy tumbled from the back of Hattie's back too, mainly because bouncing up and down with excitement wasn't easy when surrounded by spikes. After a quick brush down, Darcy leapt towards where Ash was standing, but there were still more shocks to come. A badger had seen Tilda's mum come through the hole and now ran towards her, wanting to try and solve the prickly puzzle again. She let out a loud squeal, telling her hoglets to run and hide. As they clambered to the front of the tent again, Holly and Jake just about caught a glimpse of a tiny hedgehog disappearing back through the green gap. But both of them were amazed to see a young badger sniff at the hole and almost get its head stuck before turning around and sloping off into the night. Oh, wow! called out Holly, losing control of her voice now. It must have babies too. This is better than I had hoped for, Jake. We've made a route for a family to visit us. Badger. Tick. 
beamed Jake, writing in his book with a smile that thought looked as though it would never fade. He flopped back into the tent on his back, looked up at the moonlit sky and let out a huge sigh of satisfaction. Holly, though, decided to carry on looking at the hole for a moment, in case any other creatures came back. Ash and Darcy had just had their luckiest ever escape. The badger's claws had landed either side of them as it passed over their curled up bodies, with some of its tummy hair actually brushing the tops of their heads. They stood up, stretched and looked around. Darcy was about to speak, but was beaten to it as Bernie came out of the grass on one side of the hole, now struggling to speak, but filled with joy. Ash, my friend, you, you have come back. You are back. Chris came out of the grass from the other side of the hole at the same moment. Ash, B Bernie, you, you are... We are... We... Who? Me? Who am I? I am Darcy, my friends. This night is the best. This surprise never ends. Ash has described you. Your friends, you mean home. I always believed that I wasn't alone. I, I, I've ridden on hedgehogs, explored and had fun. But now we're together. A new world's begun. As Darcy was celebrating and almost singing the words, Ash walked towards Bernie and Chris, who began running towards Ash. They stood for a second in front of each other, and then Ash reached out a furry hand and patted Bernie. Then Chris, who was looking wobbly and shocked, but utterly and totally happy. The three of them patted each other because it felt like the right thing to do, and then looked at Darcy, who had stopped talking and was now looking at them as though they were a little strange. Oh, come on, Bernie and Ash and you, Chris. When you meet a friend, you should meet them like this. Darcy tumbled into them and gave them what you or I would call them a big hug. It felt good. In fact, it felt really good. And the Russells also felt a warmth flowing through their bodies. It gave them a happy feeling. Ash, Bernie and Chris all felt like they fitted together again. Darcy. Darcy already felt like this place could be a home, but one that might contain lots more possible adventures. And then, just at the moment when they were all feeling so happy and Chris was already thinking of questions that would just have to be asked for Darcy, things changed. A sudden, very bright light shone directly onto them, dazzling them all for a couple of very long seconds as they looked straight at where it was coming from, before they melted into the grasses very quickly, rustling away in different directions. Holly's face was glazed, staring at the space where she had just been looking, not knowing what to say. Her heart raced. Her head span. She went to speak, but no words would come out. She slowly switched her torch off, put it in her pocket, and silently went back inside the tent, where Jake was now lying on his front and writing a few more notes in his book. He looked back over his shoulder, grinned, and said, Hey, Holly, I can't wait to share these results. I can't believe what we have seen tonight. People will be so amazed. Yes, said Holly, her voice sounding far away, even in her own head. Yes, neither can I. And yes, I think they will be amazed. And with that, we have reached the end of book one together. And as with a lot of books, and hopefully good books, we'll find out or explore or hear a little more. Who has been written? It is almost finished. 
and will be edited very, very soon. And this will be a series, so the story will continue. I think it's fair to say the story needs to continue, eh? So if you've enjoyed this book, and my telling of it, please do let me know. Leave any comments, any questions, any suggestions, any ideas. Um, and also, I'd be really interested to know if you think Ash, Bernie and Chris are boys or girls or male or female or however you see them in your in your heads. Because people have read and heard this story and they've all come up with different ideas. Uh, and that kind of fascinates me. So do let me know what you think and what you're feeling at the end of the book. Uh, and I would love to hear from you. And also... If you have any requests for another book to be read, then do let me know in the comments section as well, because we finished this one. So we need another one to choose. I hope you're all well. Stay that way. Keep smiling. Keep having fun. And I will hear from you very, very soon and see you soon too. Take care.